Hello, my friends. This is Linda Lippin, and welcome to the Pilates Goddess Podcast. Well, hello, my friends, and welcome back one more time to the Pilates Goddess Podcast. This is your host, Linda Lippin, and today we're talking about deepening our Pilates practice, deepening our relationship to Pilates. You may hear some background noise today because I have my window open. Uh, I live in New York City, if you don't know, and we have had some major league rain and flooding um, over the past week and weekend. And I'm just so excited that I can open my window when it's nice out that I don't want to close it. So please forgive a little background noise. I live on the 22nd floor, mind you. So this is background noise from that high up. (laughs) So I had my monthly Zoom meeting on Sunday night or Monday morning for my folks in Australia with my Pilates Teacher Mastermind VIP members. And we had actually a really interesting conversation about Pilates and about um, really the divisiveness of the classical and contemporary uh, separation and divide. Now, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while or you follow me online or you work with me, chances are you know that I am a pretty staunch classical Pilates teacher. Like, that's what I do. But A lot of you who knew me way back when and who did your teacher training with me when I had Balance Center on the main line of Philadelphia, you also know that I've had many years of doing very contemporary Pilates and teaching contemporary Pilates. I had the Balanced Body Reformers with the different colored springs and the adjustable risers. I was very, uh, I worked with a lot of clients who had leg length differences and MS and muscular dystrophies and all kinds of things. And I needed and used that ability to have two straps that are different length or to have the spring pull coming from a different direction. I also used to have in the studio many uh, weights of springs, even for leg springs and arm springs, so that all of the clients who we saw, whether they came in in a wheelchair with Parkinson's or whether they came cruising in from their golf game, um, were able to do the work and get benefit from the work. As I've progressed in my Pilates career, now going on 36 years, uh, I, I realized after a while that that level of adjustability is fabulous if you're doing a lot of deep rehabilitative work. However, if you are in a fully stocked, fully equipped classical studio, And what I mean by fully equipped is not just the the big things, not just the reformer, not just the, the chair and the Cadillacs and things like that, but that you have all the barrels, you've got the high barrels, maybe you have a lighter pair of leg springs in addition to um, the heavier pair. Maybe you also have the baby armchair, you've got the pedipole, you've got the other small things the foot corrector, the toe corrector, the breathalyzer, the the neck stretcher, like all of these things, um, you actually then don't need all of that adjustability in one piece of equipment. Because if you're in a fully equipped classical studio, you can pull somebody off of the reformer for an exercise and say, we're going to go do it over here where it might be more useful. So when I worked with my client, Susan, for years at Real Pilates, um, and she had, you know, osteoporosis and severe scoliosis and leg length differences and a hip replacement and, and lots of stuff, I was able to do pretty much all of her, what 
uh, contemporary teachers might call uh, legs and straps, reformer work with the leg springs. Okay. We started out with Deborah Lessons leg springs, which are classical springs, but they're a tiny bit lighter than the Graz or Pilates design springs. And then she graduated to the, the heavier springs and she was fine. So, you know, what I realized is a lot of my need for that adjustability, say in a reformer was partly because I didn't have all of the stuff that I might have if, I had had a full classical studio. I didn't quite know that then. <laughs> I know that now. Um, and that's how I try to work now. So when I talk about, you know, deepening our relationship to Pilates, I, I want to almost m- make this a little bit more meta and a little bit more kind of overarching and over the top of all of these other things that might be going on um, within the Pilates world and the Pilates community. There are still lawsuits going on by the folks who tried to trademark the the Pilates name, um, you know, 25 years ago. There's still uh, all kinds of contentious stuff going on. And I realize that a lot of the judgment that I hold for both the staunch classical Pilates people who felt compelled to sue everybody, um, as well as the uh, mixed emotions that I have about all of the contemporary work um, that's happening and the larger group classes and the faster teacher trainings and the online only teacher trainings, which I don't even understand. Um, that it's really important for those of us who love the Pilates work and who love the method to get together and to have some introspection and to have some deepening of our connection to our bodies, to each other, to the work and to what we are teaching. And, you know, what happens is we tend to default to what we know and what we do at any given time. So we're like, oh, this is working now. Who needs that other shit? Right. (laughs) But I actually got called out by uh, one or two of the VIP members in being very judgmental about something uh, that I didn't necessarily have the right to be judgmental about. And I'm going to tell you now what that conversation was. So we started talking about renaming of exercises or um, naming pieces or variations of exercises. So one example that we gave was that a woman asked in a Pilates teacher Facebook group, uh, not my group, about an exercise called Hawk and what we would recommend for different cues uh, and things for setting up for Hawk. Now, Hawk is not an exercise I was familiar with. And again, I've done plenty of contemporary training and plenty of classical training. So I was like, wait a minute, this is an exercise I know not. And it turns out that what Hawk is, is it's one of the variations on the side sit-ups on the short box on the reformer where you come over into the side sit-up and then rotate your upper body towards the springs. I think we've probably all done this. I just knew it as one of the variations or add-ons to the side sit-ups. I never felt the need to name it. And I said, well, why do we have to rename it? Like, why can't it just be this variation of the side sit up? And one of my VIP clients looked at me and said, Linda, if I'm in my studio and I have taught my clients that this particular thing is called Hawk, then I don't need to talk them through the setup and delivery of this exercise every time we do it. I can just say, we're doing Hawk now, and they'll know what I'm talking about. 
I took a deep breath and I was like, shit, that's right. And if you're listening, Sasha, yes, th- this was you. And yes, I've been thinking about this. Um, because why couldn't we do that? And why wouldn't we do that? You know, I used to teach Physical Mind Institute uh, Pilates teacher training, which I taught for over a decade, and I still work with them. And one of the things that I always loved about the Physical Mind training is that it started out with um, a, a little bit of an expansion on, but Eve Gentry's original uh, pre Pilates fundamentals. And what I always loved about teaching those pre Pilates fundamentals is that number one, some of those exercises are really fucking hard to begin with just on their own. But number two, when we would go into the full mat and do the full exercises, I could just refer people back to the fundamental. So it made the teaching easier because you were doing a knee fold or you were doing a hip hinge or you were doing a hip extension or, you know, whatever it was. And I could just say the name of the fundamental and my group would just respond and be like, oh, that's what we're doing here. And realistically, is that any different from giving the exercise a new name or giving a variation of an exercise a name? Like, I understand, and I'm going to hold staunch to the fact that I would like the exercises that Joseph Pilates named to keep those names. But there are a lot of variations and modifications and things that have come later on, even within classical Pilates. We know there's exercises we do that Ramana created that were not from Joe. Um, And that, you know, what's, what's so wrong with naming these exercises? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Does it change my relationship to Pilates, to my clients, to, to my colleagues to say that this variation on the side sit up is called Hawk? No, (laughs) it doesn't. So I'm sitting here in this kind of fall season, you know, in October. It is a season for me always of discernment. Um, We've just come out of September. I just sent an email out to my list and I talked about the fact that, you know, I'm Jewish and September is just like a slam of, of spirituality and, and looking at your life, whether you want to do it or not. Um, we start out with Rosh Hashanah. So we've got the, the Jewish new year, the beginning of the Jewish calendar that's followed by 10 days of, of not just introspection and repentance, but figuring out how you might be able to do things better, going out and apologizing to the people who you treated like shit, Um, and then that 10 day period ends with Yom Kippur. And then a week after that, we start Sukkot and we're in Sukkot right now. So, and that is basically a celebration of, uh, surviving the trip through the desert and (laughs) having to live in huts and having a hut for the tabernacle and having to travel and be nomads. We build huts and, and eat and hang out in those huts as much as we can during um, this particular holiday, which also ends with prayers for rain for the next harvest. So, you know, it's a lot going on in my kind of spiritual life. Uh, Then also in September, at the end of September, I have my birthday on the 22nd. I have the anniversary of the day I met my husband on September 27th, and that was 31 years. And, and I think about all of these relationships that, that I have in the world. And one of the biggest relationships for me is my relationship to my body and is my relationship to Pilates and, and the Pilates method. Um, I have been literally doing, doing Pilates since I was 19 or 20 and I'm 57 now. I found Pilates to be so good for my body and so good for my clients' bodies that once I kind of had it in my life, 
I, I like absorbed it and just never looked back. <laughs> it's given me a great way of making a living. It's giving me a great way of being of service in the world and being of service to other people. Um, it's, and it's given me the ability to move pretty well in my body, frankly. Um, even though I don't move nearly as well as I did when I was in my twenties and thirties, um, I move pretty darn well and I move well because I do Pilates. Now I do other forms of exercise. So here's something to think about. If you are consistently like on class pass or whatever, looking for Pilates classes or looking for Pilates that's going to give you a hit workout or Pilates that's going to give you cardio or Pilates that's going to give you all of your strength training or Pilates that's going to give you whatever. Stop that. Okay. Pilates is not meant to be high intensity interval training. Pilates is not meant to be Tabata. Pilates is also not meant to be divided into a leg day or an arm day or a whatever kind of, of workout you're doing. Okay. Pilates is also not meant to be cardio. In fact, Pilates is strength training. So it's really anaerobic if we want to go there. Um, and yes, you can do jump board in Pilates and we do, uh, plenty of pushups and planks and jumping jacks and things like that in Pilates, which all came from Joe. But at the end of the day, you want Pilates to be about Pilates. Pilates is about strength. It's about mobility. It's about stability. And it's about getting a full body workout, feeling the connection of the center of your body to your limbs and being able to work your body from a strong center with good breathing. Okay. That is what Pilates is. Now, Doing Pilates will help you do all of those other things. So does my Pilates help me when I want to do my HIT and Tabata cardio stuff? Yeah, it does. Because I know how to bend from my hips. I know how to land to jump bending my knees. I know how to properly stabilize my, my center and my powerhouse so I can move my arms and my legs quickly and change positions quickly. All right. Does Pilates help me in my strength work? You know, when I'm working with weights and when I'm working with, with heavy weights and heavy bands uh, to keep my bones strong. Yes, it does. Because once again, I am able to hold strongly through my center. I'm able to hold my back and torso in positions so that I can work my legs properly and work my arms properly, get the muscle work, get the loading into my lumbar vertebrae that I need because that's one area where my, my bones are getting a little bit weaker. And again, all of that work is helped by the fact that I do Pilates. I've talked uh, ad nauseum on here, right, about my knee, my meniscus repair surgery back um, back in April. I can't believe it's been that long, but anyway, and how Pilates allowed me to get back the range of motion and strength around my knee, so that I was able to simply schedule the repair surgery and not have to go to physical therapy and go through the strengthening and the range of motion work. So I am extremely grateful for the presence of Pilates in, in my life and the clients who I work with are very grateful to, for the presence of Pilates in their lives because as they get older, and as they injure themselves and get better and, and go through the things that we go through in life, they are better able to manage all of it through Pilates. Once again, do a lot of them do other forms of exercise? Yeah, they do. But I'll tell you, I have some clients who just do Pilates five days a week. Maybe not always with me, but doing Pilates several days a week with 
and instructor. So over the next four weeks, starting next week, and that's going to be October 10th on Tuesday, I am for four weeks going to be sharing a weekly lesson, about five to 10 minutes, to help you deepen your connection to the essence of Pilates and to your body. I don't care whether you do classical or contemporary Pilates. I don't care whether you teach classical or contemporary Pilates or what version of it. We are all going to come together and just come to a better understanding of the Pilates method of our bodies and how Pilates can really help us and stay with us and be in our bodies in a way that helps us do everything else in our lives better. And with a little less pain. (laughs) There's nothing bad here, my friends. So I invite you on this journey with me. There are several ways that you can join me. Number one is you can go to my homepage, lindalippin.com, spelled just like my name, and join my email list and you will get links to the trainings in your email starting next Tuesday the 10th. The second way is you can go on Facebook, on social media, join either my consumer focus group, Strong Bones Pilates, or my Pilates teacher focused group, Pilates Teacher Mastermind. And those trainings will be shared in both of those groups. I really, really look forward to not only connecting with you guys more, but connecting with Pilates a little bit more, um, connecting with the basis of what we're all doing a little bit more, and hopefully watching a little bit of a sea of change in our relationships and our attitudes about our bodies, our clients, Pilates, and other Pilates uh, teachers, other Pilates studios, other Pilates programs, so that we can all become a little bit more accepting and pull out the goodness out of all of the Pilates that's out there. So my friends, I hope that you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, please go to Apple Podcasts, to Spotify, or to the Pilates or to PilatesGoddess.com and leave a rating and if you can, a written review and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Pilates Goddess podcast. Music brought to you by Nerd Salad. Please leave a review on Apple Podcasts, especially if you liked it. And please like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks.